Hi, my name is Dr. Erin Daniel with Rejuvenate Life Chiropractic, and today I'm going to talk about some helpful tips that you can have with looking at your own body to see which muscle groups you may need to stretch out or foam roll. So in order to do this, um, you can look at yourself as you would naturally just lay down on your back. So I'm going to um, reposition my camera, lay down, um, show you what I'm looking at, um, and then I will be describing to you uh, some of the different muscles that you wanna work um, on stretching. So down we go to look at some feet. All right, so when a person lays down on their back, I have a tendency to either flare their feet out in their relaxed position, or they turn their feet in. And each of these motions is gonna give us a different um, type of muscle group that we're going to work on. So for example, if we are flaring out, this motion is external rotation of our hips okay, in the socket. With that external rotation, usually the muscles along the sides of the lower extremity and then the outside portion of the calf muscle will be the areas you wanna really focus on as far as foam rolling. When it comes to uh, up further, the external rotators of the pelvis are going to be a lot of the, what we would consider the glute muscles, the deep internal six rotators, the piriformis, the gemellus, the obturators, um, will be the major ones. So this motion is what happens we want to make sure that we are then working on those glute muscles with our tennis balls or with our foam roller in order to, um, to help with that. Strengthening wise, if this is the normal position, strengthening in a squat, we wanna make sure we have a parallel foot alignment instead of the toe flare. So a lot of people who do this, as soon as they go to squat down, they're gonna have their nice you know, hip width squat and then one or both of their feet's gonna flare out. So keeping focused, having this up. An exercise to help with that is going to be to have one of those circular resistance bands and you can have the person keep it around their quads when they do that squat and they're more likely to do the correct motion. From a strengthening standpoint, it's important to work on the internal rotators. So a lot of people, when they do like any kind of outward motion, if we simply turn the toes in towards the pigeon toe and then do the exercise, we're gonna be strengthening. Even when you do this motion, if you're doing a leg extension machine, uh, where you would be basically coming up. So this motion, instead of coming with your feet straight up, you'll tilt them in and work there. Another action would be anything that we're doing with squeezing um, the adductor muscles. So you can put a ball between your legs and squeeze, or you could um, put a pillow, anything really that you could focus on. Your two fists could go in between and just use your own body resistance. So again, we wanna strengthen the internal rotators in that position, and then foam roll the outside. Okay, also our IT band usually is pretty tight, so you can foam roll that IT band, uh, foam roll those glutes, or use the tennis ball. Strengthen anything into the abduction position, or the internal rotation, you can still work um, any kind of exercises standing or laying down with the resistance bands on, just turn the feet in, and that'll get those internal rotators squeezing together. So that is what it would be if we have the foot flare positioned that way. If you lay on the table and it's natural and comfortable and you just feel yourself going pigeon-toed, we typically will have tight on the internal surface of our calf and tight adductors and very weak glutes and external rotators. So the opposite is true. So in this case, if we were doing an exercise that was the leg extension, we would then focus on flaring our foot out 
and doing the exercise. You could even just do this off the edge of a chair and externally rotate to strengthen, putting that resistance band, that big circular band, and then you'd be coming out with your legs to strengthen. If you were doing it long wise on a table, okay, or standing, you would then, you could do neutral or flare out to do that exercise. Okay, focusing on the outer portion. You want to strengthen the outsides. Um, and then foam roll the adductors, which I have a video on that as well. So the internal part of that leg, you would want to foam roll as well. So from a standpoint of, um, you're looking at your feet and they're falling on a table and they're going out, you have tight external rotators of the hips. If they're doing pigeon toes, you have tight internal rotators. We want to foam roll the spot that's tight and then strengthen the opposing muscle group. So these are my techniques um, that I'm looking at. So when I have a patient that comes and lays on the table, whether they're laying down on their back or I see them laying um, on their tummy, I will look at this foot flare and it gives me a pretty good indication of what muscles potentially need to be strengthened. Uh, most people who sit, they need to stretch their hip flexors. So uh, that's another area that people can work on with the, uh, either a softball or a baseball or a tennis ball um, can get in right on their hip crease, pretty much right in on the inside, and they could lay down on that and hold for 30 seconds, and that would work well. Uh, so I'm Dr. Erin Daniel with Rejuvenate Life Chiropractic. If you have any questions, you can always give me a call um, or check out my website, rejuvenatelifechiro.com. And I do have all sorts of foam rolling instructions on my YouTube channel, so like, subscribe, share. Uh, that will give you how do you foam roll this, and there's lots of examples of that, as well as different lower, upper and lower body, you know, seated exercises, which you can do a lot of these things seated as well that I just showed you. So, Dr. Erin Daniel, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.